Hi, I'm Corey Litzenberger from CGLTax.ca, and this is Brainstorming Plus Tax. Today in Brainstorming Plus Tax, I wanted to talk about whether or not you are considered common law for Canadian tax purposes. Many couples ask us if we should file single or common law, and unfortunately in Canada, it is not a choice, no matter what your friends might say. The Canadian system looks at household income to determine your eligibility for tax credits and benefits like the GST credit, the Canada Child Benefit, and various types of social assistance programs. Now, first, the boring stuff. You can find the legal definition of common law partner in subsection 248.1 of the Income Tax Act. In layman's terms, they can be simplified into, one, have you lived together for more than a year in a conjugal relationship, more on that later, in which you were not separated, i.e. a breakup, for more than 90 consecutive days during that period? Or, have you lived together for one day and you are both a parent of the same child? Now, my colleagues will point out some rare exceptions to the above, but for most of you that is hearing this, that's as simple as it gets. I must also point out that the definition of common law for provincial marital or interdependent property laws is different from the definition for income tax purposes and can vary by province. Usually, the income tax definition is a shorter time test. Okay, Corey, but what does conjugal relationship mean? Well, if you are a boring tax nerd like myself, you would understand that the only difference between marriage and common law on a tax return is that someone that is common law is in a conjugal relationship. If you didn't laugh, you're normal. If you laugh, you must be a tax nerd like myself. For the rest of you that don't see the humor, the courts have actually come up with a series of tests to consider on whether or not a conjugal relationship actually exists. The Tax Court of Canada in Hendricken versus the Queen, which was 2008, referenced a different court's 1980 ruling. Yes, I know a ruling before the first space shuttle took flight, before Diana Spencer married Prince Charles, and before the first female justice was appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. But the ruling in 1980 was for a different purpose, but has been expanded and clarified over the years, and Hendricken stated that it should apply similarly when it comes to the Income Tax Act common law requirement of a conjugal relationship. As such, there are seven areas of consideration for the definition of conjugal relationship. Basically, it is a combination of factors that must be viewed as a whole. It isn't a black and white test, nor is it a simple yes and no. You have to weigh each one and then look at the whole picture to see if it is more likely or not that you were in a conjugal relationship. So here are the things to consider to figure out if you are in a common law partnership for tax purposes as according to the Canadian court system. Number one, shelter. Did the parties live under the same roof? What were the sleeping arrangements? Did anyone else occupy or share the available accommodation? Number two, sexual and personal behavior. Did the parties have sexual relations? If not, why not? Did they maintain an attitude of fidelity to each other? What were their feelings toward each other? Did they communicate on a personal level? Did they eat their meals together? What, if anything, did they do to assist with each other with problems or during illness? Did they buy gifts for each other on special occasions? Number three, services. What was the conduct and habit of the parties in relation to preparation of meals, washing and mending clothes, shopping, household maintenance, and any other domestic services? Number four, social. Did they participate together or separately in neighborhood and community activities? What was the relationship and conduct of each of them toward members of their respective families, and how did such families behave toward the parties? Number five, societal. What was the attitude and conduct of the community towards each of them and as a couple? Number six, economic support. What were the financial arrangements between the parties regarding the provision of or contribution towards the necessities for life, food, clothing, shelter, recreation, etc.? What were the arrangements concerning the acquisition and ownership of property? Was there any special financial arrangement between them 
which both agreed would be determinant of their overall relationship. Number seven, children. What was the attitude and conduct of the parties concerning the children? As you can see, there are many different things to consider. Also, you must remember that this isn't a criminal proceeding, so the government does not have to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And they also don't have to assume your innocence. As a result, whichever filing position you are trying to prove, common law or single, and you are not sure as to which you might be, document as many answers to the questions that I just read while they are fresh in your mind, rather than trying to remember in two years when the CRA comes along and does the audit. And with that, for CGL Strategic Business and Tax Advisors, I'm Corey Litzenberger. Thanks for listening.